I have another gas stove I want to share with you today. It is the Polaris Remote Canister Gas Stove from the company Fire Maple. If you're interested in learning more about this stove, keep watching. Just before we get started, I want to thank the company Fire Maple for sending me this stove so that I could share it with you. So the quick backstory. So it wasn't so long ago that I reviewed another product from Fire Maple, and that was the Polaris Cook System. It is one of their integrated systems where the pot and stove hook together and everything stores inside of the pot for easy transport. It also had a pressure regulated stove like this one does. But one of my viewers commented that because of the nature of the gas stove being on top of the tank and then the pot on top of that, that. They felt that it was inherently unstable, although they did have the pot or the canister stand that did give it a wider stance at the bottom. They still felt it was unstable and they would prefer to see the same stove maybe in a remote canister style. Well, it just so happened that Fire Maple had exactly that. The same stove, not integrated into a cook system, but set up as a remote gas canister stove. So that's what I have I want to share with you today. So what I thought I'd do is I'd take you down to my bench top. I'd go over the key features, the physical specifications for the stove, as well as how it operates. And then of course, we'll do a little demonstration. All right, so just before I go over the uh, specifications for the stove, this is how it arrived to me is in just a nice little nylon sack. Simple as good, right? And there's the name on it. Fire maple, you can see it right there across the tag. Uh, yeah, okay, let's take it out and we're going to assemble it and I'll attach it to a small gas tank just to show you how that works and then we'll go through the specifications for it. So there is the extended hose. I'm going to talk a bit about the gas pressure regulator on it because that's what makes this stove different than other stoves of its type or other remote gas canister stoves. So it has fold out legs, three of them. Fold them out. They lock into place with little detents right down here. At, well, I can't say it there, can it? Right down here at the base, there's little tiny ball detents that lock the legs out. The gas uh, hose rotates freely around the bottom, so you can change it in any direction you want. There you go. That's really all there is to the stove. Now let me attach it to the gas canister before we go on. Well, maybe I'll show you this first. This is the pressure regulator as well as your, your gas flow regulator. And you can see right on the very top, there is a plus and a minus, so you know which way you're turning it on or off. You can, hopefully you can see that very, very small right up there. All right, now let me put it on the gas tank. There's always a little bit of a spurt of gas at this point, but I think we can get it on quite quickly. All right. On, nice and snug, not overly snug. So there you go, that's my full, my stove fully assembled and I'll give you demonstrations for of it in a moment. So let's go through a few specifications. So this is a 9,894 BTU stove. So it is quite a powerful stove. There are more powerful ones, but most don't reach this level of performance. The overall weight, and that is with the bag, of course, not with the canister, is 6.35 ounces, which is 180 grams. Folded up the way I had it a minute ago, it measures across at 3.27 inches by 3.6 inches high, which is 83 by 93 millimeters. Now, in this open configuration like it is now, it measures across 6.1 inches by 3.6 inches high, which is 156 by 93 millimeters. All right, so I've mentioned this a few times. It's a gas pressure regulated stove. So why is that important? So let's just talk about that for a moment. Certainly, you can buy other remote gas canister stoves and you can buy ones that are, are less expensive, but they, I can almost guarantee, because I have a few, they do not come with a gas pressure regulator like this. So what is the point of a gas pressure regulator? So what does it do for you that makes it worth spending a little bit more money to get it? All right, so number one, it has all to do about regulating the pressure of the gas as it comes out of the canister. Okay, that makes sense. But this is where they shine. 
cold environment. So most gas stoves, most butane stoves, or isobutane stoves, don't do well as the temperature drops. The gas stops flowing as well. You don't get the pressure out of the tank. You don't get the flame. You don't get the performance. And maybe it's so cold that it just stops working. Well, this pressure regulator will maintain pressure to the stove in very cold environments. Now, by very cold, I don't mean in the like minus 20, minus 30 degrees Celsius temperature range, but well below zero, you can still use this stove where most other ga remote gas canister stoves will not work. So that's number one. You get a longer uh, season out of using this stove. So that in itself makes it worth considering. Number two, this is true of all stoves. It doesn't really matter what style or what brand, but as they warm up and are used over a period of time, they automatically start to lose some pressure. And I'm not even talking about the tank emptying, but they just start to use pressure as they warm up. And the gas pressure regulator will continue to give you an even pressure and an even flame at the, at the burner throughout the entire use of your stove. And this is also important as the canister empties. There's a period of time as the can pressure in the tank goes down where on a regular stove that is not pressure regulated that you will uh, not get the same performance. You actually start to see the flames die out here and you start going down. It takes longer to bring your water to a boil. And uh, yeah, so until the very end, until the very last few grams of fuel are in this tank, you, with this stove, you will get an even flame coming out of it. So that is the benefit. Now, whether or not those benefits are worth it to you is something you'll have to decide for yourself. I have found that I really like how this works. I'm glad I have it. Would I have purchased it for myself? I think maybe I would. If I didn't have other gas canister stoves, I was looking at my very first one, I think likely I would purchase this because of those features as I uh, mentioned a minute ago. Okay, so what I wanna do is talk for a few minutes about the tests that I have done with this stove and then I'll set it up for a demonstration. So number one, I have done uh, my own personal testing and I, uh, the pot I'll use is the one I'll show you in a minute, which also came for Fire Maple. It is a one liter heat exchanger pot and I'll be doing a separate review for that. And I put 500 milliliters of water in it or two cups of water, the standard boil test as you will. It boiled in one minute, 22 seconds with a consumption of eight grams of fuel. So boil time, that's fast. That was very, very fast. Now, a lot of it had to do with the fact that it was a heat exchanger pot. I understand that. But it also had a lot to do with the design of this pressure regulated stove. Eight grams of fuel consumption. I've got stoves that will do better than that. Not many, but they're also pressure regulated stoves. So this is right in the ballpark of a good, efficient stove, although you can do better if you're looking for fuel efficiency. Now, Fire Maple got their own test, and there is a video that, of their own demonstration that I will provide a link to in the video description, which uh, gives a little bit better performance than I got. They were able to bring one liter of water to boil in three minutes, 33 seconds, and they had one of their other non-pressure regulated stoves with the same BTU output, and that came to a boil in four minutes, 26 seconds. So what is it saying? Is that you get faster boil times out of a pressure regulated stove than you do out of a non-pressure regulated stove. Okay, well, that, is that important? Um, maybe, maybe not. I don't think so. Not, it, not if you're consuming a lot more fuel. I think fuel efficiency is one of the things that were really important when it comes to these types of stoves because you want to make sure that you don't run out of fuel while you're on the trail. So uh, take that test for what it's worth. I find that this has reasonable fuel consumption, very quick boil times. And one of the things I haven't mentioned is it's very uh, regulatable, that's probably not the word, Very, the variability of the flame is great. In other words, I can get down to a point with the flame where you can barely see it, barely hear it, and now that allows for a very fine simmer without causing any hot spots or without having too much heat. Now, why is that important? Now, if you're just boiling water, that's not important, of course. But if you're looking to cook a soup or something else in a pot, you don't want it to stick to the bottom of the pot. You want to be able to reduce the heat down to a bare minimum that you can without having the stove go out on you. 
All right, let me set up and we'll do a very simple test of this stove in operation. All right, just before I start this very simple demonstration, just a couple things I want to mention. So these pressure gas, gas pressure regulated stoves, by their very nature of design, are more resistant to wind than a lot of the other designs. And that's for two reasons. Number one, when you look at the top of the stove where the jets are, you can see that they are depressed below the level of that outside shelf there. And they're also in a concave uh, arrangement. That by itself means they are less subject to breezes coming across the top, which can affect the uh, flame itself. Now, all stoves are affected to some degree. This one just less than many of the other designs. What that also allows is for the pot stands to be a little further down, a little closer to the stove itself or to the burner itself. Again, the smaller the gap there, the less it's going to be affected by the wind. The other thing I want to mention about these pot stands is that they uh, allow you to put a fairly small pot on. So here is a 650 mil titanium pot plenty plenty of support for that size pot although the one I am going to be using today and making my lunch in is this one which is the fire maple one liter heat exchanger pot because it's it's a really good uh, pot to put with this stove the other thing is this stove does not come with an integrated piezoelectric lighter like many of the other stoves do Consider that a pro or a con. It's just something to be aware of. Make sure you're carrying something with it that you can ignite it with. The last thing I'm going to mention about this stove before I light it up is that Fire Maple recommends that the only gas you use are gas canisters with an isobutane mix. They recommend against using the one pound propane tanks even with a gas adapter. Now, I'm not sure why, but that is what their recommendation is. If you decide to do so, of course you do so so at your own risk. So I'll light this up by starting with lighting the lighter and then turning the gas flow on. And you can see it lit up very easily. Now you can hear it. You're not likely to be able to see the flame. In fact, I can't see it. All I can see is the heat rising off it. I'm going to turn it down so low. I don't think you can even hear that. Now turn it up full blast put my pot on and now I only have to wait for a minute or two for this water to come to a boil and all I'm adding is just a couple of hard boiled eggs very similar to what I did in the other video hard boiled eggs to put my lunch together and once my lunch is done then I'll come back for a few closing thoughts so this is one of those situations where I didn't realize until I got home that either I had failed to hit the record button or maybe accidentally deleted the last scene for this video. So here we are, we're doing it at home. So let's do a few pros and cons for the Fire Maple Polaris remote gas canister stove. So what is it that I really like? Well, without question, it has to be the gas pressure regulator and all of the benefits that come with it. What else do I like? I like the fact that the canister is separated the, from the stove for a couple of reasons. One is the stability that this provides as it's got a lower center of gravity. Now, I do want to point out that you still need to have it on some type of a firm surface so that it can take advantage of the wide stance and lower center of gravity. You don't want it on a soft surface where those legs could sink in. The other reason I like the remote gas canister stove, it just takes the canister away from the heat. And that while that's usually not an issue, it's just a little safer, I feel, especially if you're using a very large pot and a windshield, they can reflect the heat back down where the canister is on other stoves. Not so with this. So it's just a little safer in my mind that way. Uh, what else do I like about it? It's the variability for the flame itself. So I can go from a very hot flame, obviously, to a very low flame, which allows for uh, just better simmering overall. The uh, performance of this, as you saw from the uh, demonstrations that I discussed, this has the ability to bring water to a boil very quickly, and which is always a plus, but more importantly, it has reasonable gas consumption or fuel consumption. I say reasonable because you can do better with some stoves, but uh, not many. This is certainly right in the ballpark of what you might call a very fuel efficient stove. All right, so what are the cons, if any, for this stove? Well, it's probably the one thing, and this is a relative con, and that this is a bit more expensive than other gas canister stoves. I have some discount stoves, one of them a gas canister stove that I purchased at 
a much lower price than this, but of course it didn't have the gas pressure regulator. And that's what you have to decide for yourself. Is paying the little extra for this stove with the gas pressure regulator worth the cost to you? To me it is. I think I like the fact that this is such a controllable flame, so fuel efficient, so quick to bring water to a boil, and most of all, of course, that it extends my camping or hiking season into colder weather where I couldn't do that with other gas stoves. All right, that's all I have to offer on the Fire Maple Polaris remote gas canister stove. I will of course be putting all the information for this stove where you can purchase it as well as the specifications and its performance in the video description below but I would invite you if you have any comments or questions that you put those in the comments section below and until next time get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.